Hi, I'm Darren Peppard. Welcome to the Leaning into Leadership podcast, the podcast dedicated to today's hardworking leader. Join me every Sunday for leadership insight, inspiration, and a little pep talk to keep you rolling down your road to awesome. Hey, my friends, welcome into episode 87 of the Leaning Into Leadership podcast. This special midweek release brings to you my guest, Charlie Peck. Now, if you don't know Charlie Peck, let me tell you this. Charlie Peck is one of the most unique and amazing human beings I know. She is an experienced classroom teacher, but she is also a licensed clinical therapist who specializes in trauma. Charlie's work now as the co-creator of the Thriving School Community is amazing. It's this revolutionary program that is designed for schools to help improve mental health. So Charlie and her co-author work very closely to work on solutions that schools can do that aren't big, massive, systemic changes, but rather are focused on individual mindsets and some practical tools and skills. Charlie's going to share that today in our conversation, along with a few other things. We're going to talk about this amazing event that Charlie is hosting at the end of August. It is a free virtual summit. It is the Thriving School Community Educator Virtual Summit. Charlie has some amazing speakers who will be a part of that. Yours truly is included. Uh, There's a link at the top of the show notes. Please go click on that link. Get registered for this. Again, totally free virtual event at the end of August coming up very soon. You're going to hear the entire conversation that I had with Charlie, and you're going to hear it right on the other side of this message. Hey, school leaders, I've got a question for you. What is the message that you want your staff to hear to kick off the school year this year? What is it that they need to hear? What is the energy they need to feel? If it's a message of hope, if it's a message of, hey, we're all in this together, if it's a message of, we have a choice, folks, we get to choose how we show up each and every day, if it's that message, you and I should have a conversation because that's the message I'm delivering to schools all throughout the country through the months of July, August, and September. And I have a few dates open, not very many, but I still have a few dates open as we go into the kickoff of the school year. I would love to come to your school. I'd love to share that message. I'd love to talk to your staff about really focusing on the energy they're going to bring each and every day and how they show up to make a difference, a positive difference in the life of others. If that's a message you want your staff to hear, reach out. Let's have a conversation. Email me at darren at roadtoawesome.net. Let's get your school on the road to awesome. And now, let's hit it with today's episode. So there are those times throughout the course of our life where we meet someone or have the opportunity to meet someone. And man, it just it's like you have known each other for a very long time. That was the experience I had a few months ago when I met today's guest, Charlie Peck. Um, Just having the opportunity to be around Charlie. Charlie and I have had numerous conversations since I've been on her podcast. Now she's here on mine. It's always an absolute treat to be in the same space as Charlie Peck. So Charlie, welcome into the show. Thank you so much. I do feel that same way too, Darren. I really do. Like we've known each other forever. It's great. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And, and I'm sure that, you know, my listeners right now are like, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I've got a few of those people that, you know, I don't know. It's like when you find that that next member of, of your circle and you just know it, you're like, yes, Charlie belongs in my circle. I belong in Charlie's circle. This is awesome. So, um, yeah. So welcome into the show. I'm excited to have this conversation with you today. We're going to talk about, oh, man, we're going to talk about mental health. And we're going to talk about trauma and not just with our kids, with our adults. We're going to talk about your big event coming up at the end of August. Folks, make sure that you listen carefully to that because you don't want to miss it. A free professional development opportunity with amazing educators uh, from all around the globe. So really, really excited for that. So um, Charlie, let's just do this really fast. Um, I talked about in in the intro to the show, I talked about um, you know kind of who you are, kind of read your bio, but what's maybe one or two things that people should know about Charlie that I probably didn't share with your bio. You know what? You may have shared that I was in education for over, or have been in education for over 20 years, but I spent 18 years teaching high schoolers. 
which is where I saw a ton of problems. They just came to me with, with a lot of issues because I got to teach about personal relationships, family relationships, the social ills of society, what the problems are and how to solve them. And so that is what prompted me to become a therapist specializing in trauma. And with those two lenses kind of married together, that is why when I work with teachers and try to equip them with the mental health tools we have, that's what's kind of unique about me. I think people need to understand because I've been a teacher. I know, Darren, when you were an educator and when you were constantly there and you got professional development, oh my gosh, how many times did people speak to you without having a teacher lens? And I'm like, right. oh, that's frustrating. So I think that's those kinds of things, but what you need to know about me. Yeah, excellent. No, and, you, and you're right. You know, that you sit in those professional development uh, activities. And I'm sure it happens when, when, when you're doing PD, when I'm, when I'm delivering PD, and people are like, okay, yeah. It, it, tell, me, tell me you've been through the trenches. You know, and if you can, then you know what? I might buy into this, you know. And, and I think that's one of the most important things because it's about, you know, not just establishing, hey, this is who I am or that I have this skill set, but rather, yeah, I've been there. I've been there and I've done that and I know what you're going through and I, I appreciate what you're going through. I always make sure I really convey that message uh, when I'm around any staff that I'm working with, whether it's, you know, staff of leaders or, you know, a classroom teachers or a, com you know, combination group, whatever, um, that, you know, hey, I get it, you know, and because we've done that, because the two of us probably combined to have, you know, more than half a century of classroom experience, hey, yeah, there's some credibility there. It makes a big difference, right? It does. And when you gave your keynote, when I heard you give your keynote, you could tell that you really did connect with people in that way. You let them know that you stood out there and you welcomed people in like you asked them to do. So those kinds of things are super important, Darren. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, so let's get into this conversation. Um, man, being an expert in, in trauma, in um, the mental health space, uh, this is one of the biggest topics right now. I think one of the biggest challenges that our educators face day in, day out. And we can go with this from probably 20 different angles. So let me throw a few at you. You chase the one you want to chase. So dealing with adults who have been through trauma, um, dealing with students who have been through trauma, facing a teacher shortage that in many ways is driven as a result of trauma, is creating more trauma. Um, man, I could come up with 10 more. I'll stop there. Whichever one sounds like, hey, I want to talk about that. Let's go there. Yeah. So the goal for me is always to improve the youth mental health crisis that we're in. And, and it always starts with the adults. So that simplifies what you just said, because that's why we have to address the adults in the kids' world. And by the way, if you're not at home and you're a kid, you're probably at school. And that's where we spend a lot of our time. And 96% of our public schools, Darren, they're actually giving mental health support to students. But guess what? 88% of those schools actually say that it's not effective. I mean, we've been teaching SEL for 30 years or more, and we're still in a youth mental health crisis. And we all know in the mental health field, that happened before COVID. There were things right. going on in COVID and COVID just unsettled everything. So let's talk about student mental health and accessing adults and making them feel more comfortable because the teacher shortage has a lot to do with teachers feeling unequipped, wanting to help, but feeling unequipped, but also feeling undervalued in a system where they feel very lost. And again, when they're feeling undervalued, they're not going to show up as their best. So we can talk a lot more about that, but yeah. If they're unequipped and they're dealing with student behaviors a lot, they're getting really frustrated. Yeah, I think I could see this all kind of just weaving its way back together anyway. So so let's I want to go back to something you just said that is just resonating in my in my mind. Um we've been we've been providing youth mental health support for a long time, but it doesn't work. What's what, what is like the systemic issue there that keeps it from being successful? Yes. Okay. SEL in itself is great. There's tons of data to support the efficacy of it. However, it's not solving the youth mental health problem because this is what happens. We have advisory classes. We have 
one-off classes. We teach a little SEL, maybe on a Wednesday, have on Wednesday, or we try to do brain energizers here here and there regularly. Or in our homeroom classes, we're asking classroom teachers who have never had any training uh, in mental health. So there's really not a skill set there. Not that they're not great people and don't have a great compassionate heart and don't have some skills. They absolutely do. The problem is, is that we're trying to equip kids. We're trying to give them SEL skills and t teaching them to be resilient and telling them to be resilient. And then we're throwing them right back in those same toxic environments with burned out teachers and stressed out parents. And we're asking them to thrive. And it's just, not, it's just not working. It's not solving the problem because we're only equipping students. We're not equipping adults. So how do we equip the adults? I mean, I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, 26 years from teacher all the way through superintendent. And I'm not a mental health professional. And probably, I mean, yeah, you know what? I had both oars in the water and I was paddling as hard as I could. But that didn't mean that I could solve that. I did not have the requisite skills. So where, where does it begin? Does it begin with, with skill building? Does it just begin with schools saying, wow, we need somebody to really help us with this, to grow the skill set? I mean, talk to me about that. I, I'm a school leader. What do I got to do to equip my teachers? Yeah, well, there's a few things around there, and that's why we partner with schools, and that's why we have to say we partner with them because having an outside person come in in itself it takes kind of that positioning away from you as I'm doing stuff to you, staff. I'm telling you have to do this and whether you're going to buy into it or not. It removes that barrier and it shows that they are actually, our leaders are caring about our, our, our teachers saying we've got this mental health professional who's also been a teacher. So they understand what you're going through and they're going to equip you in a way that doesn't add to your to-do list. So here's the problem. We have these piecemeal programs. And we have these really great programs that a lot of us teachers go to PD and we leave that PD and we don't have any time to implement it or it's too complex. And then you have this binder sitting on your shelf collecting dust, right? And so what we have done is when we partner, we give our teachers tool during PD's days typically. Usually it's in person, sometimes we do virtual. In person is more effective. However, we have a whole program around it. Um, and by the way, we, we threw it in a book, so it's like a reference book for staff, which is really helpful for them because that's what I would have wanted. And once we teach them the skill in that PD day, Darren, they leave knowing exactly how to implement it so they can build proficiency on their own. We do come back and help them and address specific needs if and when they want it. But the beauty of what we do is we come in and allow them with to, to learn it right then and there and then use it. And it's so simple. Like, it's so simple to remember, and that way they'll actually do it. So I'll give you a quick example. Yeah. We, have something called, we have something called the ladder of conflict. It's a visual tool. I used it all the time with my teens who were in crisis, who had a lot of big emotions at a hospital for crisis. And it's a, it works for adults totally, too. Um, you envision yourself climbing what we call the ladder of conflict, and each rung of the ladder goes up. So you might be in discomfort on the bottom, and if you don't, manage that discomfort, you're going to go up and you're going to get irritated. And then you might, you might get agitated and it just goes all the way up to rage. Well, we don't want you climbing up the ladder. We want you to visualize yourself climbing it, climbing up that ladder, noticing where you are, stopping and climbing down because the real power to solve any kind of problems is at the bottom. Simple tool. It's like taking a 25 page report and simplifying into one paragraph so that teachers can utilize it immediately when they leave and provide relief to the whole system. Would it, would it be fair then for me to take that paragraph and turn it into one word? If, if I can use one hyphenated word, what I just heard you talk about is self-awareness. Okay, so here's what I, I love the idea of self-awareness. Here's the problem. You can have self-awareness, but if you don't know what action to take next, that's effectively going to respond to a student who's in crisis or who just has a certain need is not showing they have it. You know which questions to ask. You need you know how to respond in a way that doesn't create um, more fear or threat around them. So that's why we created nine skills. They're very specific. Three of them have to do with how we manage ourselves, which does have some self-awareness in there, but it's a little bit deeper than that. Okay. And then there's three skills that help us address the needs of others 
and create that secure space for others and another set of skills that helps us solve problems together in a relationship. So there's there's nine of them. So it's not some, it's not a, a program that you have to come in and do an, a major overhaul. So you you asked me before about a systems approach. We can't do that. Nobody has time for an overhaul. And you've invested so much time in funding into programs you already have that are working well. Use what's working well and you build from there. These skills integrate into everyday practice. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. You can find out more at teachbetter.com slash podcast. Now let's get back to the episode. When you're working with schools, I'm sure that you probably come at it with the approach of, you know, helping our students in crisis through having these skills. But is there a point in time because I think there's an easy parallel to helping each other in crisis, helping other adults in crisis. Is, is there a parallel that you take with that or is it just something that we can just run with and talk about? Because I think that's really important. It's absolutely, we got to take care of our kids. But you, you said it earlier, um, you know, when our adults don't feel supported or they don't feel like, you know, they are seen and heard and valued and trusted, they're, they're going to. They're all they're all going to have you know conflict. They're all going to have you know trauma that happens in their life. How do you how do you crosswalk that? Yeah, so we work with leaders all the time actually because they need to have these skills as well. We all need to be equipped with these, Darren. And so it depends on what the issue is. So let's say somebody's working with another adult. So let's say you're a principal and you have a particular issue with a staff member. Something very simple that we teach people to use is. What is it that you want and what is it don't you want? And is this next decision you're gonna make, is that leading you towards what you want or what you don't want? So we, what we do is we take that self-awareness and we kind of throw it at you in a way that makes sense for you. So teachers are now feeling like they have relief because somebody else is looking out for them in the building. A lot of times we hear the complaint that our leaders, they don't care about us. They're not listening to us. Well, when you invest in them this way and you equip them, that helps them feel more confident to work with students because that's like one of their biggest issues right now. Um, that is huge because that leader is paying attention to their need. And so when you can transfer that skill and actually use that same common language with the adults in your building too, now you create a culture of communication. Like we always explain it like, imagine if you're trying to learn a whole new language. Well, if you're just teaching it to the kids and the adults in the room aren't talking that same language or living it as the culture, we're not really absorbing it. So it's the way it's designed, it's meant for the adults to use it, use the same language and keep it so simple that we'll do it. So absolutely a leader can use it with a teacher in a way because it's, there's, there's a skill we call social plasticity about stopping the unfair judgment, the minute a leader can come in and talk with a teacher and remove or catch themselves making an unfair judgment and know how to ask questions around that to validate them instead, you better believe that teacher is going to feel more relief. So it's it's all of those in, in this whole design. It's, it's all meant for that, absolutely for the adults. It's totally parallel to what the kids are going to learn. I just think it's, again, it's just so important and so critical that we are arming all of our adults with the skills they need to support each other, to support our kids, so that ultimately we can get to teaching and learning, because that's that's what it's really all about. But, you know, we know yeah. that when when people are in those in those struggle modes, it's teaching and learning just doesn't happen. You know, we've, we've got to make sure that we feel safe and feel like we're part of the you know, part of something special as well. So I want to ask you this before, before we start talking a little bit more, um, I, I want to hit your book a little bit more. I want to, I want to hit the event that you have coming up, but I, I want to go back to, you've, you've talked about it as SEL quite a few times. Um, social emotional learning to me is not an initiative. It's, it's just got to be part of our culture. It's just something that we do, but across the country, it has gotten a bit of a black eye or a bad reputation or in some, you know, some schools or districts or states there. Nope, we don't use that terminology or no, we don't do that here. I'm sure at, at a point in time you have come across, you know, someone or a group or something that either 
you know, I don't have room for this on my plate or that's not my job. Let's talk about the pushback that inevitably happens with really focusing on social emotional learning. Mm -hmm. So people need to hear different things to get to this, a similar outcome. All right. And so if you don't understand something like SEL, because we actually have some criticisms, not about SEL itself, but how it's delivered. And that's why it's not working. But when people aren't sure about something, it's one, because they don't know. And when you don't know, you just keep trying to do the same darn thing. Um, when they're when they're talking that way, we like to address that with practical tools and skills. So those, I guess, I hate I'm I'm stumbling here because I, I hate to group people, but the same people right. keep popping up in my head that their needs a little different. Right. Right. And so actually, <laughs> somebody yeah, very I walked you right that into way. that. That's on me. Yeah. I'll, I'll take ownership. No, of that. no, no. I want that conversation. And here's why: those are the people who need to hear more than ever that we are equipping the adults in your building with practical tools and skills that they can go and solve problems that are going to re-energize your teacher, relieve your mental health system, and ultimately improve the performance of your students. So you saw why I tiptoed into that, but that's exactly why we use that language, because they are practical tools that can be used easily to relieve the system and solve the problems that you're trying to solve that haven't been solved with SEL. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So let's let's talk just a little bit more about the book. And, and folks, I did put a hyperlink in the show notes to go grab that book. Make sure that you do that. But um, let's let's just talk a little bit about just kind of the the evolution of of the book and it and it coming um, coming to life. It's a great feeling when when your book comes to life. So tell us a little bit of that story. Yeah. Well, you know, it's me. You have several of those books out. It's so exciting. Well, you know how this goes. So Dr. Cameron Caswell and I, she and I actually were on each other's podcast. She's an adolescent psychologist. And she and I kept talking about the issues that we were both concerned about with our teens. And by the way, we both have backgrounds in child development, so we understand what leads up to the teen years. Um, but anyway, so we were talking about similar concerns and had similar ideas. And so we started putting those ideas out in front of people talking at conferences and working with school districts. And they kept saying, can we get more information? Or you need to put this in a book because we need to get this for our staff. So that's why we did it. It took us a while to do it because we needed to formulate it. But what's great about it, it just becomes a reference guide for staff. And it's, it's like something you can thumb through if you're having a trouble with responding effectively to kids who have big emotions, you can go to the social plasticity chapter and figure out the tool to use to help mitigate that. So it's it's exciting to have because it's really easy to say, well, just go yeah. get this book or here's the book. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, folks, it's, it is a fantastic book. Make sure that you check it out. Um, you've got a really exciting opportunity coming here at the end of August for people. And, you know, when you reached out, I don't know, month or two ago and asked me to be a part of it, I, I was like, oh my gosh, yes. I think I responded to you instantly with, yes, I'm in. Um, so yeah, so the end of August, we have the Improving School Mental Health Thriving Under Pressure Virtual Summit. It's an awesome opportunity for staff professional development and even better, it's free. Talk about that a little bit, Charlie, and how do people, how do people get connected with this? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So a couple of years ago, Dr. Cam and I, we ran like a big global summit for the same darn reason. We wanted to help educators have more of these tools that we offer, but also pulling from the top, like elite leaders in education and mental health coming together. And so after our book, we thought we've got to pull this together again. And we were going to actually have some charges and, and all that. We were like, no, Listen, we have to serve these communities right now. They just need so much support. So we have 12 amazing speakers. I mean, top level industry speakers, such as yourself, Darren, who are going to be there sharing really practical tools. I mean, they're only speaking for 20 minutes at a time. So it's all live. You can jump on, you can register for absolutely free and get access to any of the speakers you want. It's over just two evenings. And we did it in the evenings because we have a lot of clients on the West Coast. So it's 5 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All you got to do is register and then share that link with your entire staff. It is free PD, mental health PD. Every single one of our speakers has an incredible resource to share for free. 
And we also have some really great giveaways too, all free. So jump on this because it may not be like this next time. Yeah, and if you didn't, and if you didn't catch that, um, Charlie said free. It is free. <laughs> it's free. Free. I know everything costs free. so much these yeah. days. We're like, no, we gotta yeah. give this to people. We yeah. gotta give this to schools right now. Yeah, we have to do that. I love it. I think it's awesome. You know, uh, I mean, I guess I can kind of tip my hand just a little bit. And uh, you've you've heard this particular piece that that I'm going to do. But my 20 minutes is all about how you're going to show up. You know what what is going to be happening in the six inch space between your ears. How are you going to show up every single day? And what are you going to do to make sure that you can show up as your best self every single day? So I know that's what I'm going to talk about. I can't wait to listen to the other folks. Um, I'm actually on the road during that time. So I will probably be doing my piece from a hotel room somewhere in either New Jersey or New York, I think is where I'm at during that time. But that's fine. It's still going to be a blast. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. So, um, Charlie, I'm going to ask you you know, our, our final question, we're already at that point. My gosh, our time is just flying right by. Um, mm-hmm. Same question I ask everybody here on the podcast as a final question. And then I'm actually going to throw a bonus question at you in a couple of minutes that I didn't tell you about. So look out. Um, but in the meantime, let me just ask you that question. This is the Leaning Into Leadership podcast. So Charlie, how are you leaning into leadership right now? You know, the biggest piece is partnering with school leaders who are struggling and offering our support so that we not only relieve their school mental health system, we're relieving them, but we're working with them and meeting those immediate needs. And that's the best piece is that because we can partner with them, it actually improves the relationship with them and their staff. So that's what I'm doing in the moment. I love it. I love it. I think that is just so, so big. You know, our, our leaders need help. They need support. And folks, I'm telling you, Charlie is one of the absolute best in the business uh, for exactly that. So make sure that you're connecting with her, which throws in the bonus question. How do people get in touch with Charlie Peck? I know they're going to want to. How do they? It's funny. People tell me to remind people of that all the time. Um, <laughs> first of all, I'm on Twitter at Charlie, C-H-A-R-L-E, Peck, P-E-C-K. I love engaging with people on there. Um, but also, you can just email me, charlie, C-H-A-R-L-E, at thrivingschool.org. Yeah, you can check out the website, too, by the way. There's a ton of stuff there at thrivingschool.org. Thanks for asking that, Darren. I appreciate it. Of that. course, yeah. I will put all of those links, folks, in the show notes. Get in there and check it all out. Make sure you connect with Charlie. Um, man, I said it at the beginning of the show, and I'll, I'll say it here as we wrap up. You know, sometimes they're just those people you just know have to be in your circle. And I'm just so grateful that you are in my circle and that I get to spend a little bit of time orbiting in your circle. So thank you so much, Charlie, for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Darren. Thank you. All right, man. I tell you what, I really appreciate Charlie Peck coming on the show. It was a great conversation. Um, If you're not checking out the stuff that Charlie is doing, come on, folks, get after it. All right. Jump down there in the show notes, the very top link. I put it right at the top for you. It's as easy as it gets. Hit the link, go to the Thriving Schools Community Virtual Educator Summit. Get signed up. It's free. It's the end of August. Charlie has put together an absolute rock star lineup of educators to share incredible insights to get you fired up to start your school year. Make sure you're sharing it with all your teachers, all your friends. Make sure that that thing is out there. And now it's time for a quick pep talk. So this week's midweek pep talk is just simply this. Take some time and breathe. Take a little time. Catch your breath. Take a little time and get rested up because before you know it, it's going to ramp right back up. A friend of mine texted me earlier today and said, Darren, believe it or not, we go back next week, starting with administrator meetings. Man, it's crazy. Your summer's going by quick. Just take a little time and breathe. That's all. That's the pep talk. Get out there, folks. Have a road to awesome week. Thank you for listening to Leaning Into Leadership. Thank you for listening to the Leaning Into Leadership podcast, brought to you by Road to Awesome. Don't forget, click subscribe, give a review, and share this with somebody who might also enjoy leaning into leadership.